verse 11 now. Thank you. We'll still just give it another couple minutes. Just a couple minutes, see if anyone else is joining, and then we'll get started. Yay. <laughs> Miss Jenny just came up with more yeah. <laughs> When I say cost of, you say living. <laughs> People don't participate, I will do stand up. And <laughs> Hey everyone, so just to get started, a couple of bits for you. So in the event of a fire, which we're not expecting, we're not expecting alarm either, the fire exits are here and up there. There are also toilets if you head through this way. What else do I need to tell you? <laughs> Pritchett's Road is the fire assembly point, but just follow us, we'll get you out safely. Cool, nothing else? All good. Are you ready to go then? Mm-hmm. So, hi everyone, I am your host today. I'm Reeve Isaac Smith, your welfare and community officer from the Guild of Students. And today we're going to be talking about cost of living. So, I will introduce you to Ola Majkudome. Yep. <laughs> so sorry. Um, who is the founder of All Things Money. Uh, the pronouns that you use are she, her. I also use pronouns as she, her. Just to get us kicked off, um, we're going to have something called a Slido throughout. And in the Slido, that's how you're going to interact and ask questions. Then I'll read them out, and then Ola will respond. Just remember to be kind always, and for the people that are joining from home, you can also interact in that way as well. Amazing. Cool. Take it away. Brilliant. So, like Reeve kindly mentioned, my name is Ola, and I am going to be talking to you guys here and at home on how you guys can navigate the current cost of living crisis. So, I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely noticed the cost of living on the rise. My grocery shop is no longer 15 pounds, it's probably about 30 or so. So, you know, we can really see how much the cost of living is really impacting on all of us. So hopefully today's talk can share some tidbits on how you can budget, save, and hopefully make some extra cash as well. So, like we've kindly mentioned, my name is Ola Majkudami, and I am the founder of All Things Money. So. All Things Money is a personal finance platform that teaches young adults how to manage their finances effectively. So I cover a wide range of personal finance topics from budgeting and saving, investing, mortgages, and everything else in between. Basically everything we're not talked about at school. Um, and the community has now grown over, um, grown over 21,000 people, which is very exciting. And yeah. So let's get started with budgeting. So when it comes to navigating the cost of living crisis, I think it's always really, really important that we get started with a budget because a budget is perfect to get you guys um, to know where you are at financially. So you want to know if you're struggling, if you're in a great position, et cetera, et cetera. So budget is really important. So I'm going to start with the question with you guys, putting you on the spot. What is a budget? Anyone want to guess? Exactly, that's Sarah, smashed it, front row, <laughs> perfect, love it. Exactly, so what Sarah kindly mentioned, a budget is a spending plan that enables you to work out your um, money on a regular basis, whether that's monthly or weekly. And the whole aim of a budget is to hopefully stop you guys from overspending. Now, I came to the University of Birmingham and I know how quickly and how easy it can be to blow up your student loan in a matter of a couple of weeks. This is where a budget is really, really important. Now, a couple of people are nodding their heads. Has anyone been in that situation where they've maybe overspent a little bit? Yep, a couple of nods, a couple of nods. Don't worry, we're all human, it does happen sometimes. And again, this is why we're here to talk about budgeting. 
So again, a budget, why is it important? So budget is really cr crucial because it allows us to track our spending, review where our money is going, especially like I said, when you're not sure how you all of a sudden you're left with 5p by the end of the month. Um, and it also allows you to adjust your spending habits. So again, having that budget allows you to see where your money's gone and hopefully allow you to adjust your spending habits for the next month or the months after. So again, it's really important to have that budget. Now, there are a number of different budgeting methods out there, including the 50-30-20 budgeting method, 80-20, traditional budgeting, reverse budgeting, and envelope budgeting. Now, has anyone heard of those budgeting methods before? One, one shake of the head. You have? Have you, have you guys over there? A couple of nods? Yeah? Some, somewhat. <laughs> so today in this session, I'll be covering two budgeting methods to help you guys budget your money effectively, especially if you're someone that's expecting a student loan or if you have a part-time job as well. Hopefully these two budgeting methods will help you manage your finances effectively. So the I'm going to start with the traditional budgeting method first. Now, has anyone heard of this budgeting method before? No? No? Perfect. At least you guys are definitely going to be learning something new today. So the aim of the traditional budgeting method is to work out your income, deduct your expenses to hopefully be left with some disposable income. So your um, income can be work, um, consist of your student loans. So if you're getting student loan from student finance, um, if you have um, side hustles at university, that will count towards your income. And again, if you have a business, then your business profits count towards your income as well. Now, your expenses are made up of all the fun adulting things, such as your rent, your bills, your monthly subscription. So if you're maybe a member of, at the gym, if you have Spotify, Netflix, etc., etc. You want to make sure you're listing them all down. And then also, if you have any credit card debt or if you have any student, um, any loans addition to your student loan, you want to make sure that's accounted for as well. And hopefully, you want to deduct your expenses from your income to be left with some disposable income. So your disposable income is money that you're left with to spend, save, invest, or you know anything else you want to kind of spend your money on. So again, this budgeting method is perfect, especially if you're someone that has um, student loan instalments that comes in every term, for example. Again, this can allow you to work out how much you're left with to play. So let's give it a simple, um, give it a, um, a try. So we could start with income of fifteen hundred pounds. Your expenses might be seven hundred fifty pounds. Again, that's consistent of your rent, especially if maybe if you're living in good old Selly Oak. Um, any bills, and if you have any additional um, expenses coming out. And then you'd be left with seven hundred fifty pounds disposable income. So again, if you're receiving um, a monthly income, if you're receiving student loan instalments, this method can be perfect for that. And for me, I use this method whilst at the university. Um, and what I would do is break whatever I had left over as my disposable income and divide that by the number of weeks in the semester. So again, that gave me a weekly budget. So I knew how much I could spend on a weekly basis rather than trying to make sure that great old lump sum try to stretch over a couple of months but having a weekly budget is quite handy as well so with the 750 pounds I can divide that by let's say if it's just a monthly income I can divide that by four weeks and I think it's around like 80, 80 quid a week or so so again it makes your money a little bit more manageable so next up we have the 50 30 20 budgeting method now who's heard of this budgeting method Sarah has anyone else no Okay, so we're going to break it this one down. And again, the 50, 30, 20 budgeting method is a great alternative budgeting method. Again, if you're maybe um, given a lump sum, um, lump sum of your student loan. So the aim of this budgeting method is that 50% of your income or your student loan goes towards your needs. So again, that's your rent and your bills. 30% goes towards your wants, and then 20% goes towards your savings. So if you're maybe saving for a holiday post-university or anything like that, you can try and allocate around 20%. But obviously, as students, if you can't afford to save that amount, that's not the end of the world. But again, what a lot of students like is that this budgeting method allows you to portion up your student loan, again, making it a little bit more manageable. Um, and again, you might even think 50% towards my needs is maybe a bit too much. If your rent's maybe a little bit cheaper, you might want to readjust these um, categories Degrees accordingly. So again, you don't have to stick to this rigidly, but again, having um, an allocation can be quite handy. So again, with the same £1,500 example, I would have £750 to go towards my needs, £450 to go to my wants, and three, um, £300 to go towards my savings. So what I always say when it comes to budgeting, because many people roll their eyes at the thought of budgeting, budgeting allows you to have fun as well. And again, you want to make sure you're allocating your money accordingly so you can budget responsibly, but also have fun, especially whilst you're at university, because these are the best years of your life. So, 
Amazing. So obviously we know the cost of living is on the rise. So you might feel like your money might not be going as far um, far as it used to be. I definitely have noticed a change in my um, how much things are costing at the moment. So you really want to make sure you're reassessing your budget. So again, whether you're using the traditional budgeting method, the 50-30-20 budgeting method, you want to reassess how you can make that money stretch a little bit further. So again, you want to make sure you're um, reassessing your budget. So you might want to reassess grocery shopping. So rather than we were discussing shopping at Sainsbury's, you might want to switch to Lidl or Aldi, making those more sustainable sh um, shopping um, shops makes um, your money stretch a little bit further. Again, clothes shopping, I'm not going to lie, I did spend quite a lot of my student loan on clothes. But again, you might think this year I actually can't afford to spend as much as I did online. So again, making that sensible adjustment can really help. Again, your monthly subscriptions and your direct debits. So again, if you may be a member at the gym, I know new year new me people a lot of people have joined the gym in January and you know you might get to maybe March and realize you're not maybe going to the gym as much as you like so you might want to consider maybe cutting that out or I've spoken to people that have um Apple Music and Spotify again you might not need both and um, again with your switching of your um, subscriptions as well Netflix Amazon Prime do you really need that and again if you do need it, it's not a problem having it but just making sure you can actually afford to have that in your budget again you want to make sure you're making that assessment so how can you budget for the future? Again, you know, when it comes to managing our finances, we want to live in the now, but also want to know that we're accounting for the future, especially if you're maybe in first year, you know, you want to make sure your budget is lasting for your, your, um, your years at university. So again, you want to look at what um, look at what costs are set to increase. So again, if you may be in Sainsbury's, you might not be able to afford that as much anymore. You might want to make your switch to Lidl. Or again, you might notice that your bills have increased. So you want to work out how much have your bills increased by, so allowing you to maybe adjust your budget accordingly. So if you know your bills have gone up by £50 a month, you might need to cut £50 out elsewhere in your budget. So again, you want to make sure you're um, budgeting in that sense. You also might want to create an emergency pot of savings. So again, um, as university students, you might struggle to save a set amount. However, you might want to just have a little pot of money to help you out. So I mean, me and Reeve were talking about how you've got buffer for your, um, your, your bills at home. So again, you want to make sure you maybe have a buffer or you just have a pot of money to help you fall back on something. Because again, my car, I think my car broke down at university three or four times. And it was really important to make sure I had just a little bit of money, whether that's 50, 50 or 100 pounds. Again, that can really help you in the case of an emergency. And lastly, make sure you're reviewing your budget um, regularly. So again, a budget isn't a fixed thing. Again, I think people think that when they have a, um, they've created their budget, it's meant to set forever. No, you can adjust it every week, every month. Again, you might realise £50 a week limit isn't going to work. You might want to maybe do 60, 65. So again, making sure you review every month or every week can be really, really handy. So who's ever created a budget or tried to create a budget and has never stuck to it? Yep, a couple of people, a couple of <laughs> Again, we're only humans. So the reason why I ask that is because, again, you want to make sure you're setting um, program and processes in place that allow you to stick to your budget, especially if you're um, at university and wanted to make that student loan last. So these are some of my top tips to help you guys stick to your budget. So tip number one, create a separate bank account. So this is something I did when I was in my first and second year of university. I would create that weekly budget of mine and create a separate bank account to um, move my weekly budget into and only go out and about with that card so I personally use Monzo and with my Monzo card Monday to Sunday I only go out with that and if I know maybe I've had a sociable evening on a Monday and Tuesday and I'm left with maybe 10 pounds then Ola can't go see her friends on the weekend so again having that weekly budget is really really handy and something you might want to do Next up you've got is cashing out your budget. So again, this is an alternative if the sound of creating a separate bank account doesn't really appeal to you. So again, I did this in first year, in my first semester. I used to cash out 50 pounds, which I don't know how it lasted, but I used to cash out 50 pounds every Monday and I knew I only had five 10 pound notes. And I'm not gonna lie, I did love um, a good fab on a Saturday evening. So I had to make sure my budget lasted accordingly to allow me to enjoy my weekends out. And then lastly, you can consider using a budgeting app. Now, obviously, many of us have our smartphones, whether you have an iPhone, if you have an Android, there are many budgeting apps out there now to help you budget your money accordingly if you're someone that doesn't feel confident to be able to budget accordingly yourself. So these are two of my personal recommendations. So guys, again, at home, make sure you're taking note of these budgeting apps. So Money Hub and Emma are two of my um, personal favourites. Money Hub and Emma um, allow you to view... Uh, 
review all of your bank accounts in one place. So if you're someone that maybe has two current accounts, you might have a savings account, these both of these budgeting apps allow you to view all of that in one place. So again, it makes it a little bit less daunting when it comes to reviewing your finances. And they're also great because they can actually set spending limits on your um, spending as well. So again, if you're maybe someone that likes going to the goose, I don't really know, um, you want to maybe set an, um, a budget accordingly to make sure your spending doesn't go over. So yeah, make sure you take a note of these um, apps. So let's talk about savings. Now, I am aware that some of you guys in the audience and at home are university students, so don't feel um, put on the spot with this question, but does anyone here currently have a pot of savings? Oh yeah, we've got a couple of hands, amazing. Now, the reason why I ask that is because, as we know, we are in this cost of living crisis. I feel like everyone makes that very known and very clear. So again, it's really important that we have an emergency pot of money, no matter how much that is, to allow you to just fall back on something, um, fall back on in the event of an emergency. So again, that might be job loss, unexpected travel, car expenses, retirement, et cetera, et cetera. It's really important to have something put aside. So like I mentioned, my car broke down three or four times. A new car battery cost me 100 pounds. It's very painful, very expensive. So again, just knowing I had a pot of money that I could fall back on was really, really handy, especially when we already know university can be quite financially tough. It can be quite strained. Just knowing you have something to fall back on can be really, really handy. So how much should you save? And this is the question I get asked about quite a lot. And again, as a university student, don't stress if you can't currently save at this amount. But you want to try and aim for around 10 to 20% of your um, income if you're working a part-time job. Or if you've got a student loan, if you can afford to try and save that amount, that is great. But again, ideally, you just want as much um, saved as possible should anything happen. So whether that's £5 a week, £10 a month, whatever it is, your future self will love you for it. So please don't overcomplicate the thought of savings. I feel like young people especially, um, we assume that we have to have tens of thousands of pounds saved up towards a house, et cetera, et cetera. But even if, you know, my cost of the train um, coming up to Birmingham was 40 quid, I know there's many times last minute I had to jump on the train home, just having 40 pounds saved up, again, can really, really help you. So I've got a few money-saving tips for you guys whilst you're here at university to help you guys make the money stretch a little bit further. So take advantage of discount codes. So again, this is really, really important if you're, especially if you're like an online um, shopper, like I was at university, you really wanna make sure you're um, making your money stretch that little bit further. So um, using websites such as voucher codes, Groupon, they're really great websites that allow you to get discounted um, discount codes for certain retailers. And then another one of my favourites that you guys need to download is a Google Chrome browser extension called Honey. Now, Honey is definitely my best friend now. It, um, when you're um, shopping online, so let's say, for example, I might be doing a shop on ASOS, um, Honey will scour the internet for a valid discount code and will apply it to your, um, to your basket. So again, allowing you to take advantage of um, extra discount codes for your shop. So again, that can be whether you're shopping online for clothes, if you're shopping online for insurance, especially contents insurance in your student house. Um, again, make sure you're using these, um, these voucher codes, um, yeah, these discount codes. Next up, utilize cashback websites. Now, who uses cashback? Oh, we've got one hand, amazing. Anyone else? No? Amazing. So utilising cashback websites is crucial now. Again, one of my personal favourites because using cashback websites allows you to earn a certain percentage of your money back on your shopping. So again, a lot of people tend to think that um, websites such as Top Cashback and Quidco are scams. It might be too good for them to be true, but they are tried and tested by yours truly. And I can honestly vouch for these two websites because, again, they allow you to earn money back. So, for example, I um, purchased my mum's Christmas present um, via um, Virgin Experience Days, but I used Top Cash back and got £18 back. So again, it allows you to save that extra cash. I went on holiday to Lisbon last year, £81 saved my Top Cash back account and that paid for my flights to Lisbon. So again, guys, if you're not already using cashback websites, make sure you do. So again, as well, checking comparison websites. This is really, really important, again, because comparison websites allow you to find the best deals on whether you're looking for your car insurance, if you're looking for, um, I'm trying to think, um, car insurance, if you're looking for a new car, things like that. Comparison websites are great, even if you're looking for the best savings accounts on the market. These will um, give you the best um, 
the best information for you and again allowing you to save that money so if, again if you're looking for maybe contents insurance things like that make sure you're using comparison websites my personal favorites are supermarket.co.uk um, and money.co.uk as well they're great if you're um if you haven't already used them and again, be supermarket savvy. So again, I know we've touched on, you know, shopping in Sainsbury's or Waitrose versus Lidl and Aldi. If you can, you want to try and go to those supermarkets that might be a little bit more affordable, especially as a student. Again, there's website and um, there's apps as well, such as Shopmium and Olio that also allow you to take advantage of um, discounted um, food as well in supermarkets. So I think my friend the other day used the app Shopmium and got free porridge for a week. So again, that's really, really handy. Again, as university students, we want to make sure we're not spend, um, spending money unnecessarily. So again, that's really handy. And Olio as well is another great place to try and find discounted food. As well, lastly, you can opt to download a savings app. So again, I'm back to my apps. If you're someone that maybe struggles to um, save the pennies, these apps such as Chip and Moneybox are great that allow you to save some extra cash. So both of these apps come up um, come with um, a roundup feature. So how I talked about how you don't necessarily need thousands of pounds saved up, but this roundup feature essentially rounds up your shopping to the nearest pound and puts that extra penny into your savings pot. So again, I can maybe do a shop at um, Boots and my shop might come up to £4.50. And um, Money Hub will round my money up, my spending up to £5 and put the 50 pence into a savings pot. So, again, allowing to save that extra spare change is really handy. And both of them, again, allow you to um, open up multiple savings pots. So, if you're maybe saving for a new car and a holiday, you can have two separate savings pots to save accordingly. Amazing. Now, let's make some extra cash. Has anyone got a side hustle? Oh, got a side. Would you mind sharing? Oh, okay. Love that. Anyone else? Yep. Oh, I love that. My sister used to do something like that, and I love that. Very creative. So the reason why I asked that, again, is because now we're seeing the cost of living going up. We might not necessarily see, you know, our income increasing, or our student loan may not have increased either to accustom inflation. So, again, we want to try and find creative ways of increasing our income to make sure we can kind of cushion that, in, that in increase in spending. So, again, I'm going to share some tips on how you guys can make some extra cash whilst at university. Amazing. Oh, sorry guys, bear with me. There we go. So you could firstly start with starting a blog. So maybe if you're someone that is creative, loves writing, you can create a blog to make some extra income. So one way you can do that is by creating a website or a blog site and creating um, content on something that you love and then how you can monetize that is using something called affiliate links so an affiliate link allows you to create some income on any sale made using that link so I might have I don't know a personal finance blog and I have an affiliate link to download money hub and let's say money hub is 10 pounds for the user to purchase I might be able to make 10% on every sale made so again depending on your niche you might be able to do something similar we all know about the rise of influencers again that can be another way of making some extra cash whilst at uni oh all right we'll go back sorry guys don't seem to be working oh there we go yes next up you can consider selling your skills online so if you're someone that maybe is a like copywriting maybe you are someone that is creative and can do podcast editing you might be a photographer you can look to sell those skills online so that might look like um look like literally having a client every week where you literally might just help them design their website etc etc that can be another handy way of making some cash at university so websites such as fiverr and upwork are great platforms that allow you to set, um, sell your skills online so i know a friend that does um voiceovers for films that like she gets paid like 150 pounds per video which again when you're trying to just make some extra cash is perfect so next up, we also have online surveys and focus groups. So this was my biggest side hustle at university. Um, if you have the spare time, you can consider taking part in online surveys and focus groups to make extra cash. So whilst I was at university, I used to make an extra 100 or 150 pounds a month, um, every month just doing online surveys. So yes, I spent a lot of time online when I should have been at my lectures, but it really was handy to allow me to make some extra, um, extra cash. So websites such as Prolific, 
YouGov, Angelfish, user testing, those websites are really great. So make sure you take a note of them if you have some spare time to take part in these. Um, one of my friends got paid £500 to do a focus group on like um, the use of glasses and contact lenses. So again, really easy cash and very handy if you're someone at university. Next up, we, you can consider selling unwanted clothes and items. So again, this was my main side hustle when I was like, um, in sixth form. So if you have unwanted items and clothes that you no longer wear or use, that can be a great way of making some extra cash at university. So again, I'm sure you guys have heard of these websites, but eBay, Vinted, Depop, Facebook Marketplace, they're great places that allow you to sell your items. And again, make some extra cash. The saying goes, one man's trash is another man's treasure so again make sure you're utilizing that especially whilst at university because I know how easy it can be to accumulate things you no longer need there we go and lastly if you want to or feel confident enough you can invest in the stock market now this can be a great way of making some extra passive income obviously it depends on how much disposable income you have available to play with at university but if you feel confident enough investing in the stock market can be another great way of making some extra cash Amazing. And lastly, like, an, um, like we all know, the cost of living crisis is quite tough. And, you know, especially as a student, when you've already got pennies to play with, you know, you can find yourself really struggling financially. So if you're someone that is struggling financially, please make sure you're reaching out to support, um, whether that's either at university or there's organisations like the ones listed above, where you can actually um, reach out for impartial, free advice. So again, please don't suffer in silence. And that's probably one of the biggest takeaways I want you guys to take away today, because we all know how tough these times are at the moment. So yeah, those, um, those organisations are great, as well as the university. Amazing. So hopefully you guys have a few questions. Um, you can use the Slido here um, to take part and hopefully Reeve will help me read out any questions. Cool. Can I get a round of applause for Ola, please? <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so, well done. <laughs> okay, so um, I'll give you a few seconds or a few minutes to start writing up your questions if you would like to. Um, we have a few questions already on my screen, so I'm going to get started with them. So take your time with the ones that you're asking and carry on as we go. Are you ready for some questions? I would you like I to am. take a seat or would you like to stand? I'll stand. <laughs> okay. Um, question number one. Mm -hmm. uh, what method of budgeting do you think might be beneficial for students who would be earning around £100 for part-time work? Oh, that's a good question. I think... If you're earning like a set income, then I think it can be quite handy having maybe, to be fair, I think it very much depends on whether or not, what you prefer to use. So the 50, 30, 20 method can be quite handy because you know you have a hundred pounds to play with. You might go 50%, which is 50 pounds in the, um, the needs file, 20 pounds goes into savings, 30 pounds goes into your wants. So that can be quite handy. If that, that doesn't work for you, then the traditional budgeting method can also help too. Cool, thank you very much. Okay, next one up is, are the budgeting apps that you have referred to free to use? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are definitely free. I'm definitely downloading them as soon as we leave here. Um, um, how could you earn money from just blogging? So just blogging. So like I mentioned, the affiliate links is one way you can work, um, monetize your platform. So what you want to do is obviously make sure you've got like a good online following. Or if it's a website, you want to make sure you've got traffic directed to your um, blog site so you know people can click on these affiliate links and then do do the process of shopping xyz or you can work with brands that's another way that people like to monetize their blogs so there's many ways you can monetize your blog you just have to make sure you have enough time to devote to it <laughs> awesome. did anyone else know about affiliate links before no i did not it's very interesting <laughs> cool thank you very much okay does opening a savings account affect your credit score that's a good question no it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> nice and easy simple answer um, do you have any tips on starting blogs or, po or podcasts to earn extra money? Good question. So, yeah, when it comes to starting a blog or a podcast, I think it's really important that, one, you speak, um, you, it's about a niche or an interest that you genuinely love. And I think when you're starting a blog or a podcast, you need to make sure that you're happy to start that and do it happily for free because, obviously, you don't monetize from day one or overnight. So you wanna make sure you're happy to do that for free. And then once you do, obviously hopefully you'll be able to grow that following, grow that online traffic, and then hopefully monetize from that. So yeah, definitely make sure you love what you're talking about on there. Fantastic, that's definitely a good tip. Okay, we've got lots more questions. They're still, yep. they're still coming keep in. Keep them rolling, keep them rolling. How do, I avoid, how do I avoid going into debt if I invest in the stock market? 
How do you avoid? Okay, so when it comes to investing in the stock market, the way to avoid falling into debt is to use your disposable income. So if you're looking to invest in the stock market, make sure you're using your own cash rather than you know credit cards or loans or debt to fund that investing lifestyle. So to avoid getting into debt, make sure you have the spare cash available. And I always say, if you're looking to start investing, make sure you invest money you don't particularly mind losing because again, you don't want to end up falling in debt and then have no savings because you invested all your savings into the stock market. I don't advise doing that. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Definitely a good one to keep in mind. Um, I also appreciate if you don't know the answers to some of these because some of them are <laughs> quite quite specific. Um, when should I get a credit card? So Ooh, I assume like, okay. so if you're already a student, should you have one whilst you're at uni? Should you get one immediately after? Mm -hmm. When's the best time? Okay, so I can't give advice on when or not you should get a credit card, but what I um, think about first before applying for a credit card, especially if at university, if you really need one at uni, because it can be quite easy to fall into that cycle of using that credit card and maybe you might not be able to afford to pay it back. So I probably would stay clear of it whilst you're at university, but if you you just graduated and you maybe want to improve your credit score, then getting a credit card could be a great idea, but you just need to make sure you're using it wisely and effectively to avoid falling into a debt trap. So what I mean by that is making sure you spend a little bit, but pay it off in full every month to avoid any in, um, interest charges. Yep, definitely. Um, what is cashback? Cashback. Could you explain, okay, please? so what I mentioned with cashback with the websites is that um, when you're using cashback or cashback websites, what you do is you will go um, find a retailer. So you might have, let's say, ASOS is my easiest one that always comes to mind. Um, you'll go on top cashback, click on ASOS, do your shopping as normal. You don't have to um, pay any um, anything for your membership or anything. Um, purchase your shopping on ASOS, and let's say, for example, top cashback might be offering five percent cashback on any shops. Um, purchases made on um, ASOS, you'll get 5% back on anything you spent on the website. So that's your cash back. So again, earning a percentage of your money that you would have spent anyway without the cash back. Stunning, thanks so much. Also, if anyone has any follow-up questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. Equally, if we're going too quickly or anything like that, or using words that you don't quite understand, feel free yeah. to just let us know. <laughs> cool. Um, this might be a bit specific, but what stock would you recommend investing in? Oh, sadly, I can't advise on that. <laughs> Sorry, I have to do a bit more research for that one, I'm afraid. Um, do you think the envelope method of budgeting is useful? And do you want to give a bit more insight into the envelope method? Mm -hmm. So the envelope budgeting method is essentially where you cash out. So how we had the 50, 30, 20 budgeting method, um, the envelope budgeting method is very similar in the fact that you cash out your um, budget. So let's say you might have um, an envelope for your grocery shopping, an envelope for your bills, an envelope for your rent, and you put the cash in those envelopes. So again, that can be quite handy if maybe you're someone that tends to go over budget quite easily, especially when you're using your, um, what's it called? Your contactless card, because again, it's so frictionless, using the envelope budgeting method can be quite handy because you have the cash instead. So knowing that, you know, that's your set amount for, let's say, grocery shopping, you know when you're in Sainsbury's, you can only shop with 50 quid and it makes you stick to your budget better because you're playing with cash. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, could I have a side hustle like being a content creator or being on Fiverr as an international student? I don't see why not, absolutely. So again, just making sure that um, you have the idea that you, you know you kind of want to what you want to monetize. So let's say if you're using Fiverr, um, you just know what skill you're looking to sell. But yeah, absolutely shouldn't be an issue at all if you're an international student. Cool. And I will say, because sometimes based on, if you're an international student based on your visa, um, if you have any questions about your requirements, then you can reach out to the international student team who can also advise you further if you need any more help with that. Um, so what do you think about investing in stocks via a stocks and shares ISA or using a financial advisor to do the investing? Good question. So if you're looking to invest in the stock market, then I recommend opening up a stocks and shares ISA. So what that is, is a tax-free wrapper that allows you to invest in the stock market tax-free. So you can invest up to £20,000 tax-free in the stock market. Um, if you're someone that's completely new to investing, then you might want to look at getting a financial advisor. They can be quite expensive, so it's not something you have to do. But if you don't feel comfortable enough to do so, financial advisor can help you make the right um, investments. So again, answering that question on what I can invest in. Um, likewise, there are many apps now out there that allow you to invest in the stock market with as little as one pound. So again, you can research into the different investing platforms that allow you to do that as well. Stunning. Okay, as a university student, you don't often have a salary job. So mm -hmm. how do you budget for varying amounts of money each month? It's a really good question. That's a very good question. Let me think, varying amounts of money each month. So I'll talk about how I kind of budgeted in my first year because in my first year I didn't have a part-time job. So what I did was, again, worked out my student loan. So my student loan instalments came in 
every semester. So I had, to, um, let's say for semester one, my budget had to last from September through to out to December. What I would work out is how many weeks I had to cover with my student loan and account for the rent that was coming out as well. So again, having that um, weekly budget allowed me to budget accordingly. So just knowing that I worked out how many months of rent I was gonna have to pay, the bills I was gonna have to pay and divide that by the number of weeks, again, allowing me to have a weekly budget. That was really, really handy. Awesome. And as Ola said earlier, changing it if you need yeah, to. Yeah, exactly. So maybe one week you might, let's say, in a dream world, you have a £100 weekly budget. You might realise £100 is a bit too much. So you might actually cut that back and maybe just do £60 a week or maybe £60 a little bit too little. Then you want to maybe increase that. But again, if your student loan doesn't cover that, find creative ways to increase your income. Again, your university also have lots of jobs available as well, which people never take advantage of, as well as finding a part-time job outside of campus too. It's a good opportunity to also say about um, surveys and focus groups. Yeah. Um, the university and the Guild often have opportunities. There are uh, opportunities available with the Guild of Students currently. So oh, check amazing. your emails because <laughs> you can get paid to do some focus groups. Um, um, can you open an ISA as a permanent resident? As a permanent resident in the UK, I'm assuming. Yes, you can. I love you. You've, you've got such quick answers. Thanks. <laughs> Um, do you have to be? Do you have to pay to be a member of the cashback websites? No. So with Top Cashback and Quidco, they're completely free to join. I would always be very skeptical of any other cashback websites outside of those two that are charging you to be a member because you shouldn't have to be paying anything to be a member on these websites. They normally pay you a sign up fee, um, a sign up um, incentive. So I think ca um, Top Cashback at the moment is paying ten pounds, fifteen pounds for people to sign up. So again, that's extra cash for you guys. Fantastic. Um, and should giving to a charity be included in your expenses or is disposable income? Good question. I guess it depends on whether or not you're um, donating to charity every month. So if it's something you're paying every month, then I'd put it into your expenses because it's a fixed amount. But if it's just something, it's a one-off or you just do it every other month or so, I might put it in my disposable income as well. Fantastic. Any more questions, keep them coming in. Remember the code is up on the board. Yeah. Um, what do you think should be a standard weekly spending for a student? Not including rent, so groceries, fun stuff, travel. Oh, again, so I think that's a very hard question because personal finance is personal to you. So it depends on, you know, whether or not you're a very sociable person, whether or not you stay at home more. Um, during my first year of uni, I lived off £50 a week. And um, that definitely won't be, able to, won't be able to happen in this cost of living crisis now. But I think, again, just working out how much you can comfortably live off. So working out how much you actually spend going out. If it's too much, then you might want to cut back on it. But again, personal finance is per um, personal, so I don't want to give a set amount. <laughs> yeah, no, very fair. Cool. Any other questions? Keep them coming through. Just type them up and then we'll get them confirmed for you. Are there any other things that you want to cover based on any questions that have come so far? Um, oh, you put me on the spot now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think definitely when it comes to being at university, I think, you know, we put a huge emphasis on, you know, making sure, like, we make sure that, well, let me think, let me work this carefully. Sometimes we really stress about our finances at university. So I think it's really important that, you know, we're having these open discussions like we are today and just working out how we can best manage our finances that suit our needs. And obviously we all know, you know, some people are on student loans, some people aren't. So again, making sure we just all know we're in such different places financially and that isn't an issue either. So just knowing what works for you and we're, um, sticking to that, I think is the best way to go about it at university. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, we've just got a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. This one's a little bit trickier. But how much do average students spend on each budget category? Just want to know whether <laughs> I compare to others. I honestly don't know because I don't, I don't delve into people's finances, sadly. <laughs> yeah. And I think can go back to what Ola has said of just making sure that it is personal to you yeah. and reviewing as needed. Mm -hmm. um, what's the one thing you wish you'd known when you were a student? Oh, one thing I wish I knew when I was a student. I'm going to have to think about this one. So far from what you said today, the cash back. Yeah, definitely like the creative ways of making cash and also how many opportunities there are at university to make money. So, you know, there's so many jobs that my friends just utilise that so well on campus. And then also, like we touched on, there's so many um, ways that the university can help you financially as well. I think that needs to be shouted out a bit more because I know some people really struggle financially. Making sure you utilise the university's help is really, really important and there's no shame in seeking help at all. Fantastic. We'll just give one last opportunity for any last questions. So if any's got any, if anyone's got any, then just chuck them in the chat now. Have a bit of water. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Okay, so could I receive help from the organisations you mentioned if I'm an international student? They will be able to give you more tailored advice depending. But if you're an international student, then again, I'd reach out to the university first to see what they can do before you reach out to the organisations externally. Yeah, fantastic. And you can also reach out to Guild Advice. That's a good port of call um, internally. And they'll be able to help you navigate the system within the university and within the Guild of Students. Okay, any final questions? No, stunning. Okay, can we get another round of applause for Ola, please? Perfect. Let's see if gonna work. One last slide. Oh, amazing. So on a final note, like I mentioned, I'm the founder of All Things Money. So if you ever have any follow-up questions, please feel free to give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter. We share lots more um, tips when it comes to personal finances. We've also got a podcast as well, so feel free to check that out. I do cover a lot about how to manage your finances as a student. So yeah, please take, um, take stock of those episodes as well. Cool, thank you very much. And if you guys wouldn't mind, have a look on the Slido. And then we've just got a couple of questions about how you found the talk today. And if you wouldn't mind giving us some responses, it just means that we can keep improving, see what you like, um, and keep it going. But thank you all so much. Thank you for coming. And make sure to have a look at all of these places too. Thank you, everyone.